Hello and welcome to our first ever Lord of Heroes character spotlight. These are going to be a series of videos going through every character in the game that is playable. And more so, less saying whether this character is good or this character is bad. More like, if you want to use this character, this is what you're working with. This is what you can use within their capabilities to your advantage. So, starting with Waterframe. This is Waterframe. She is one of your starting heroes, so you will have her from the beginning. She is a guardian and obviously water element, so her primary purpose is tanking, being a guardian, but also debuffing. She has debuffs on all three of her skills. And speaking of skills, let's take a look at those. Okay, so for her one, she attacks the selected enemy and has a chance to reduce their defense for two turns. This is quite helpful if you want your DPSs to do more damage. That'll be a 15% decrease in the target's defense. And it gets up to a 70% chance to proc at max rank. It would be a lot more beneficial if it was not required to be max rank to get up to a 70%, but uh, you work with what you've got. Skill 2 is an AoE, attacks all enemies. 40% chance to inflict stun for one turn. This uh, starts out at a 5 turn cooldown, goes down cooldown at level 4 and 6 to a 3. Uh, starts at 30% chance to inflict, goes up to a 50% chance, upping 10 at 3 and 5. And the reason this is so low is because it's a stun. Stun will prevent them from having their next turn when it gets to their next turn. And will also prevent their skill cooldowns from going down said turn. So it's quite a nasty debuff. The only problem with it is that it does not affect many of the bosses in the game, so this is more for any of those minor bosses that are are affected by it, or enemies that are not bosses. So your general adds or uh, player characters in your PvP in the Colosseum. Um, it's also really low because it's an AoE, so it affects all five enemies. Skill 3, attacks all enemies, spirit cost 4 at base, 70% chance to reduce their attack power for 2 turns, and deals up to 5 times additional damage depending on enemy's max health. So the more health the enemy has, the more damage it does. This aspect allows you to somewhat uh, run Waterframe as an off DPS damage dealer if you so choose. Although her primary role is still providing debuffs to the enemies and providing bulwark damage reduction to your allies. This starts at 60% and goes up to 70% chance at level 4 and goes down to 3 spirit cost at max level. And then for her passives, she has a health passive and a fire damage reduction passive. So, fire enemies will do basically nothing to her. Especially considering that she has one of the highest base healths in the game. I think either the highest or second highest. Her attack and defense are a little bit on the low side, even at A2. But her health is very easy to leverage to high numbers, as you can see. Currently, I have her at approximately 56,000 health. The only problem is that she has, the way I have her set up right now, she has no defense. So, things like Earth Lucilica or Earth Laughless will utterly decimate her, because they do either current health or max health based damage, and they are Earth. 
so they will get extra crit chance and extra damage against her in PvP. As a Guardian, her Ascension stat that goes up by 10% instead of 5 among these four is Resistance. So at A2, she gets an extra 20% total for a base of 45. And at A2, she also has 20% debuff rate, 60% crit damage, and 20% crit rate. All of these will be reduced by 10 at non-ascended and go up by 5 per ascension, other than resistance, of course, which starts at 25%, going up 10. So ideally, given you can leverage her health a lot more than you can her defense, the ideal stat setup for main stats would be 3 to 4 health amongst all of these. You can obviously can't do defense on these two, so I would hit a 1 or 2 defense in here. And as far as equipment set priority, if you're running her as a tank debuffer, then you would run a Bulwark set and an Aegis set to give your allies the damage reduction of the Bulwark set, which is denoted right here. That will make her take a little bit more damage, but it'll spread the damage reduction to allies. As opposed to this one, just her, but this only requires two pieces of equipment as opposed to four. As for these two down here, I currently have a debuff rate. I would much prefer either a speed or resistance set down here if I'm not specking into more health here. This would allow her to get in those debuffs faster and therefore before enemies have a chance to take an action, therefore giving her the opportunity to prevent said action. And if you have a bunch of resistance, then that'll keep her from being crowd controlled herself as often. So there's a lot you can do here. Also, if you're trying to run her as an off DPS with her max health based damage from her burst, that is the point where you would run full Aegis on all six equipment just to give her the damage reduction, which will allow you to ignore her defensive stats with attack mains on the primary four with crit rate substats and then crit damage ring and necklace to optimize her damage and you can ignore the defenses because she will be taking 45% less damage from everything just because of the Aegis set. So in the same vein as say Light Zyra. Non-Ascended, Ascended 1, and Ascended 2. Here is Water Frames S2 Seismic Slam. There you go. Have some stuns in there. Killed those ones outright. They're low level to be fair. And she's at max level. <laughs> so keep that in mind. When she is built as a tank, she will not be doing very much damage whatsoever. Here is Water Frames Burst Starburst Surge. Here is Waterframes S1. When it comes to raids for Waterframe, one of her better uses if you're running tank is to have her on squad 2 by herself. This will allow her to be a distraction for significant amount of hits from the monster to distract from your primary DPS team over here. Also, she'll be firing off her one, which will regularly reduce the monster's defense to allow your primary team to deal more damage. On fire days, if you're running her as an off DPS, you can use her for her burst and run her as the DPS slot, either on the first squad or a 
secondary minor DPS squad. The main problem with her when it comes to raids is her S2 is effectively useless considering that the monster is immune to stuns. Therefore, when she inevitably fires it off, given that she is AI controlled during this, it's a waste of a turn. Her primary uses in this are her S1 and her S3. In conclusion, Waterfram is a solid starter unit. She can be outshined by quite a few other options in certain categories, but she is by no means inherently weak herself. She's just more on the niche side, but if you want to use her, you can use these tips to more effectively do so. She is my favorite character in the game after all, so I use her all the time. That's going to do it for this character spotlight for Lord of Heroes. I will see you in the next one in upcoming days.